In this video, we're going to complete our derivation of the IV estimator for the case of a bivariate model. So, at the end of the last video, we had this expression up here at the top. And furthermore, we were able to simplify this expression further by assuming that the covariance of our instrument with the error was actually zero. And if this sort of second term on the right-hand side is zero, that allows us to rearrange for beta. So beta here we, is, we have is equal to the covariance of zi with yi divided by the covariance of zi with xi. And actually, as it turns out, this is the form of the IV estimator for the case of a bivariate model. Okay, so what assumptions did we need to make in order to sort of derive this IV estimator? Well, the first assumption which we need is that the covariance of our instrument with the sort of emitted factors EI has to be equal to zero. And we needed that in order to get rid of this second term on the right hand side here. But there is another condition which our sort of instrument has to satisfy. And you can sort of see it here on the sort of expression for the IV estimator if you examine the denominator. So the denominator here, notice that if this denominator gets really, really small, then the sort of expression blows up because you've got a sort of a number on the top divided by a really, really small number, which in the limit that this sort of number on the bottom here goes to zero, our IV estimator completely blows up. So we better have that the covariance of Zi with Xi doesn't equal zero. So the first condition here has the sort of intuition, which is that our instrument has to affect y only through x. And the second condition is just sort of a relevant condi relevancy condition. It says that our instrument has to affect x in some way, because if it doesn't affect x in some way, well, it's not really a relevant instrument at all. And hence, any sort of estimators which are going to be based around that instrument aren't going to be particularly sensical. Okay, so a sort of valid question that you might ask here at the end is how does our IV estimator compare with that of the least squares estimator? And we're going to first of all look at whether they are sort of both unbiased or whether they're both biased. Okay, so the least squares estimator in the case where we have endogenous errors, we've already sort of stated is biased. So we've got a sort of crossed, it's, it's not unbiased. But you might sort of think, well, maybe we've sort of got round the bias issue which we had in the least squared estimator by using this instrumental variable. Well, unfortunately, it turns out that instrumental variables is similarly biased. The problem is that in sort of finite samples, because we've got a sort of ratio of two random variables, so the top and the bottom here, it doesn't necessarily have to satisfy any sort of finite sample um, distribution, um, which means that we can't really be overly restrictive and sort of say that the, the sort of distribution is centered around the true population parameter, beta. Okay, so no sort of improvement on the least squared estimator there. But what about the issue of asymptotic unbiasedness, or in, or in other words, consistency? Well, it turns out that we know that least squared estimators are inconsistent, but it happens to be the case that IV estimators, as the population of, sorry, as the sample size tends to infinity, the bias disappears. In other words, IV estimators are asymptotically unbiased, which means they are consistent. So if we have these two conditions satisfied, we are able to make an improvement over our least squared estimator by using a relevant instrumental variable. And it's better than a least squared estimator in that it is consistent. In the next few videos, I'm gonna give some examples of how the use of good instruments can help us to get around the issues which are imposed by endogenous errors.